What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See lights like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. I'm here with Jennifer Spivak, and we're going to talk about the adgirls.com and what she does. But before we get into that, Jennifer, I always like to talk about other episodes people should check out. And since this, we're talking about Facebook ads and agencies. Um, Todd Tasky, I had on, uh, he helps sell agencies, actually, as a second bite podcast. So check it out. Um, it actually talks about how sometimes people make more on the second bite after they sell um, than the first bite. And Jason Swank, who uh, we were talking about before we hit record here, he helps agencies grow. Um, really a wealth of knowledge. So check out uh, the interview. I have two interviews with him. One is um, actually of how they're buying up agencies. And another one is just him you know, talking about how agencies can grow. So check that out. And this episode is brought to you by Rise25. At Rise25, we help people give to and connect to their Dream 100 relationships and partnerships. And we do that and help people do that by helping you run your podcast. You know, we're an easy button for people to run their podcast. And for me, Jennifer, the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. And I found no better way over the past decade, give to my relationships than have them on my podcast, profile them, help them talk about what they do, their thought leadership that then, you know, other people can use to grow their business. And so if you've thought about podcasting, I think you should. If you have questions, you can go to rise25.com. You know, both my business partner and I have been doing it for over a decade. So feel free to ask us any question that you want at rise25.com. Um, and I'm excited to have Jennifer Spivak. She's CEO of the Ad Girls Agency. It's an all female Facebook ads agency that generates millions of dollars for clients on Facebook and Instagram. She is also an adjunct professor of digital marketing at the City College of New York, a true New York you know, woman. And uh, Jennifer, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Jeremy. You know, we're gonna do something, you know, as you could see, if you're watching the video, um, you see Inspired Insider here, but we're gonna actually um, do some breakdown of some ads. Um, and Jennifer is gonna share with her her simple funnel that has produced a lot of revenue for her business. So she's kind enough to share that with us. And we're going to break down. So I would encourage you, if you are listening to the audio, go to Inspired Insider, make sure you're on the page and the video will be there because um, we're looking, we're going to break down some, some ads here and some funnels here. Um, and I want to start with, you know, how this all came about, uh, Jennifer, and it wasn't a positive thing of why this all happened. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think like turning bad situations into something really magical and profitable is my zone of genius. So it did start out quite dark and, and got to a place that was really awesome. Um, the, the whole uh, origin story, so to speak, of my, my business and my life's work, honestly, starts with a very a physically abusive relationship that I was in in my early 20s. This is about um, 11 years ago at this point. And what actually led me to my life's work and creating the company actually wasn't about what happened in that relationship, but how I got out of it. So I was able to get out, move on with my life, move into a new apartment, like almost overnight, relatively easy, all things considering compared to what is the experience for so many other women in this situation because I had a secret bank account with $1,500 that my abuser didn't know about. Like that $1,500 was the difference between life and death, you know, staying and having nowhere to go. It, it was everything. And I, after I got out of that situation, I started getting really involved in domestic violence advocacy work. And I learned that financial abuse is actually present in 99% of domestic violence situations. And that is any uh, anything that ultimately has the person who's being abused not be able to be in control of their own finances, which then on top of the physical safety issue creates this conversation, even if they are ready to leave of, am I going to be on the street? Am I going to live in a shelter? And when there's kids involved, I mean, come on, it's just a whole other conversation. And so once it was really driven home for me, that money, that $1,500 made all the difference for me. And that actually in so many of these cases and having access to money is the difference between life or death. 
I just felt that like I needed to do everything that I possibly could in this life to put more money in the hands of more women. And that is actually the mission and vision of my agency. I know that we are doing Facebook ads, but we are, again, a primarily female team. We work with primarily female vendors. We have primarily female clients who are also helping them make money. And so we get to just have uh, this beautiful mission that touches all of these different women all over the world. So with the domestic abuse, can you talk a little bit, what was life like? You know, because yeah. I know when people say that everyone's kind of visualizing something different. Yes. And we visualize like the stuff that we see in the movies, right? Like the woman with the black eye who's wearing sunglasses. And that is so often not the case. So one thing that's interesting about my story is I was um, in college while this was happening. I had a 4.0 uh, GPA. Everybody, you know, thought that I had this really like normal, amazing, successful life. And I had to like live this duality of, you know, going out and going to work, being really successful, having a 4.0 GPA, and then going home to um, what I have described as like just hell. Um, my abuser was actually, and this is really common, not um, super into like traditional physical abuse. Like getting hit was actually not a normal thing. He was more into like psychological abuse. And this is also another thing that most people don't understand, but abusers actually only abuse the level that they need to in order to maintain control. And so if they don't need to escalate further, they they just they don't right as long as they're able to maintain control. And so for me, it was a lot of threats with knives, threats with, you know, this is, again, the dark thing, but it's it's been published. So it's OK. You know, he would make me stand um, in the bathtub and hold a plugged in appliance over it and just like berate me for hours and, you know, the threat of that. And so it was a lot of the threat of violence. And so you can imagine being in that kind of situation and wondering if I try to leave this, what is going to happen? And just because we're, we're talking in this detail, I have to do my due diligence. If anybody is in this situation, please do not leave on your own. That's actually the absolute most dangerous thing that you can do. Find an organization, do safety planning. Um, the time in which women are at most danger in these situations is actually when they are getting ready to leave. And there's an organization you do work with also. Um, yeah. So the organization that we work with actually, interestingly enough, they're more focused on what happens after you're out. So um, there's a lot of organizations. There's Safe Horizon. Um, I worked with um, an organization that is specific to New York, which is Met Council. And those are the types of organizations that can help you do safety planning and actually get out um, you know, in the safest way possible, but free from the organization that we partner with uh, touches on another piece of this that so few do. Now you're out. Now you are safe. Now what? And how do we make sure that as many of these women that are leaving these relationships are empowered, not in general, but especially financially, because this is the world that we live in, to make sure that they can actually like go and create their own lives and not, uh, feel the need to potentially go back to that situation because of money. And so Free From really works to help financially empower survivors, help them achieve economic justice. They have a program where they provide, you know, living wage and, and jobs to them, where they help survivors start their own business. It's really, really powerful. Yeah. I mean, you know, Jennifer, when someone's fearing for their life, it's, you know, you don't want to trigger that person. And so what finally gave you the courage to go listen I, enough is enough because i'm sure a lot of people stay in it for for years or forever yeah um so for me it was these little moments of seeing how the relationship was potentially going to impact my future i have just always been a person who is incredibly driven and there was a weird i don't even know how to describe this um it somehow felt like I could get by if it was just something that was in this moment. But for example, like I had a job and he would like call there and like, you know, not let me go to work sometimes. And I was like, this is actually going to like mess up the life that I am building for myself that I know is still mine, regardless of the situation that I'm in. And I actually cannot allow that. And like something just kind of took over me. <laughs> I was like, this is just we're we're going to save ourselves now. This is like what we're doing. This is actually what we have to do. 
And then at that point, did you contact one of those facilities or that organizations that, how did I you did. even know to do that? So I was um, seeing a therapist at the time and she okay. gave me a, a number for contact and I called and an amazing man named Nathan answered the phone. And, um, you know, within literally a number, like a couple of days, um, I was, I was out, I was in a new apartment and, uh, you know, began, what did like, Nathan of- say? I mean, it's like uh, probably just really, uh, nerve wracking to make that call. Yes, it was very nerve wracking. And I actually remember the specific spot I was standing in. And about a year ago, I ended up back in that neighborhood and like, Ooh, I can't even like think like just, I, I saw that spot that I was standing in. And I like, remember like who I was and I was just right outside of my job. And again, it was just something had taken over me. And I was like on autopilot of this is just, this is just what has to happen now. Um, and so, yeah, I, it, yeah, I was a little bit on, on autopilot and really just following the lead of this organization that, you know, was so helpful and really held my hand because there are so many pieces to this. I mean, you have to go make a police report. You have to get an order of protection. Then you have to like work with the, there's so many practical steps. And again, Mm. you're at a point of like, just trying to stay alive. And so needing to handle all of those things feels incredibly overwhelming and having an organization that's like, Hey, we're going to handle this for you. Just show up here, fill this thing out. Um, It really, you know, made all of the difference. Yeah. So that really drove you to um, work. I mean, you're an all women agency and I think your clients, I'm not sure, are all women as well. Primarily. I mean, I would say 95 to 98 percent. We do have a couple of, you know, clients. Yeah. Our contacts are men. We love men. We think that they're great. And, uh, you know, we also are just really committed to our mission. So I wanted to talk about because you have this and you do this for your clients as well, but you kind of eliminate a lot of complexity um, and you keep it simple. And there is a simple uh, funnel that you set up for yourselves. And again, you do this for clients, but I'd love for you to walk us through what that looks like. And you're yeah. kind enough to share that page. So I'm on, if you're watching the video, you can see the ad girls agency. It says meet your new favorite Facebook ads team, digital growth partners. We scale women owned businesses from six to seven figures, full stop. Are you next question mark? And then there's a button. Yes, I'm ready to scale with ads. And you want to walk through this page a little bit, or just I'll let you talk about, you know, some of the thought yeah. process. Yeah, why don't I, I'll give you the big picture and just FYI for anyone either listening or watching, this is like the long click funnels URL. If you do want to go see it live, you can just go to the adgirls.com slash apply. It is an incredibly simple landing page. I will point out some nuances, but here's sort of like the, the structure of this overall funnel. And I almost want to say funnel in quotations. It's, it's the most basic thing. I'll tell you why it works after, but just so you understand the pieces it is a incredibly simple ad that says, hi, we can run your Facebook ads. Um, we send people to this landing page that, you know, it is, it is beautiful. There's a lot of information here. It is long form if you want to like scroll through it just a little bit. There's obviously, you know, you can see here about our mission. Um, you know, we talk about myself and my business partner, Courtney, when the owners of the ad girls. Um, obviously, if you scroll further down, we've got some case studies. So for the most part, a lot of the standard stuff that you would expect. Um, And so people click on the ad, they come over to this landing page, and then somewhere throughout, they click on one of the call to action buttons. So if you want to click on one of them, the next one you see, they're they're everywhere. I need this right now. I'm going to click on that. There we go. Yep. Okay. So then they get to the second page in the funnel, which is the actual booking page. We've got obviously just like our standard booking widget embedded in the page. We've got some testimonials for additional social proof on the bottom. Now I want to point out something even more important. Go to, go as though you're actually booking. So like click continue um, and just like select a time. Cause what I want to show you is our booking form. Yeah. Just like pick a, pick any time just so we can get to the booking form. Great. So this is actually one of the most important parts of this entire system, because here's the thing about Facebook ads. It is Facebook. It is the world. It is everybody. You are going to get a mixed bag. The idea of trying to have the perfect targeting that helps bring in 
high quality people who maybe have a higher net worth is deeply imperfect. And so there are a lot of ways in our messaging in which we sort of signal that we are a higher end service. But the number one most important thing that we do, if you just scroll down to the bottom, um, we actually are very clear and upfront. The investment for our entirely done for you service is $5,000 a month. Should we be a good fit? Are you prepared to make this investment? So we are immediately price qualifying people. And you see either they say yes, and if the answer is no, there's a notification that says, please do not complete your booking if you aren't ready. So we also and you have, have a qualification a here. It says if your business is generating at least 20,000 a month, we may be able to, you know, and so you're, you're again, another further qualification there. Exactly. And so I think like the biggest thing here is we are not, I, I'm the one that does all the sales calls. And the last thing I want to do is spend my entire day talking to people, getting them excited. And then at the last second being like, and this is the price. And they like simply cannot afford it. That's actually an unpleasant experience for me and for the person that I'm talking to. And so we always felt really strongly about being super um, transparent about price and the commitment level, both in general, but especially because we know Facebook is any and everybody. And we are not an agency that is for every single business at every single level. The drop-off points from ad to landing page to booking page to completing the booking, we have quite high drop-off rates between each of those steps. And that's actually what we want. It's we, not a bad thing, right? To, right. We want to deter the wrong people. That is a thing, a thing that we are doing very actively while also, of course, magnetizing in the right people. And then if you want to just scroll down a teeny bit more, this is just one other fun thing that we have. Um, we don't work with negative or difficult people. Tick here to confirm you are awesome to partner with. And so that's just another way in which not only do we show like a little bit of our personality, but again, we really want to deter the wrong people. I'm not sure anyone really identifies as difficult if they are, but <laughs> just like another... <laughs> It's another, it's another fun thing. And so um, this form actually is such a crucial part of the overall funnel, because again, it's not that there's something magic about how I'm running the ads or something magic about the landing page. It's that we are using a specific approach to messaging, which I can get into in a second, um, but also really actively saying no to the people who are not the right people. And then there's just one last piece of this, which I think a lot of people, this is like the space that people tend to forget about. After the booking, there's still so much that can happen between somebody who really actually just discovered that we existed in that moment booking. And then we need to make sure they actually show up for the call and that they're properly nurtured and warmed up. So we have a six email sequence that delivers between when they actually book and when their call is. This also is our proprietary approach to messaging, and that's what makes it work so well. And the end result at the end of the day is people show up to my sales calls and they say things like, I feel like I already know you. They're like, they want to be, they want to be besties and they want to pay me money and they're like ready to go. And it's amazing. Obviously, you know, look, it's great for, for our revenue, but it's also fun and exciting to be on calls all day with people who like are so into what we're about. So behind our mission, they know everything that we do. They're showing up to sales calls, not needing to be sold. It's not about we're hiring different between different agencies. We've picked Jennifer. We've picked the ad girls. We're so about everything that you stand for. And I'm able to close $20,000 plus contracts in 30 minutes or less. Yeah. Yeah. I almost want to change. I'm going to change the copy. on. Uh, we don't work with negative people. You brought up a good point. Like to, to someone view themselves as negative or difficult. Maybe it's, um, Hey, if someone has told you you're impossible to work with and negative, <laughs> then check this. Cause probably there's someone who's told them, that, but they might right? not view themselves. So. I know. Make them check that important. box. Um, I yeah. love it. That was super valuable. <laughs> Thanks for for running through that. And um, yeah. I wanted to talk about um, how did you meet Courtney, your business partner? So, Courtney and I met on Facebook. You did. All right. <laughs> Yeah, she actually lives in Texas. And we, fun fact, we signed our partnership um, before we ever met in person. Like we signed our official partnership document. So just for a little bit of backstory, I had been running my own agency um, for about six years, just under my name. It was just like Jennifer Spivak, LLC. And Courtney had also been running her own agency um, under her name for also around the same amount of time. And so while we've both been you know, doing this for 
many, many, many years, we officially merged to create the Ad Girls January 1st of 2021. And, uh, you know, what's so cool about how we met is we were actually supposed to be competitors. So we would both get tagged in the comments in a lot of female entrepreneur Facebook groups when people would say, you know, who do you know who does Facebook ads? And so we were almost in a God way. darn it, like, Courtney again? No. <laughs> Courtney again, right? We're like pitted against each other. But what we actually ended up doing is um, Courtney and I and a couple of other um, you know, women in the Facebook ad space, we actually created a like a peer-led mastermind. And so we would just meet up and, and share ideas, you know, really further that whole concept of collaboration over competition. And what happened with Courtney and I is we realized over time that we had these completely opposite zones of genius. And so she hired me and her business to come in and help her build out my funnel and my, my sales process, because while she was brilliant with operations and profit margins, sales was just not her strong suit. And then I ended up hiring her to come into my business and say, can you help me, you know, manage my team and help us clean up our profit margins and, after having that like little test run, we were like, wait a minute, should, should we, is this like dumb for us to do this separately? And, you know, a lot of people were like, partnerships are bad, especially with two women. And like, you're going to hate each other. And <laughs> everybody told us it was a bad idea. Now, you know, we're, we're a little over a year in, who knows what's going to happen, but it is life-changing to be able to just focus on the thing that I am so epically good at. And, and same for Courtney, like my dream was to just do sales calls as my entire life. And I thought, how could that ever be possible? And Courtney's dream was to just never have to get on a sales call ever again. And so we've got like this perfect distinction of, you know, I am front facing, I do marketing, I do sales, I bring in the revenue and Courtney optimizes the revenue, optimizes the team and really just make sure that we are delivering the most amazing service possible. Yeah. So it really evolves. It's really interesting how that happened. It's like you get tagged in the same, you know, chat yes. and it yes. evolved into actually we have different. And I find this, the, you know, from the outside, sometimes people look like competitors. One, they have different zones of genius. Two, sometimes they just serve totally different niches and have a yeah. different skill set within that niche. So sometimes front facing, it looks like people are competitors, but they're really not because of who they're focused in on. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, even from that point, um, Courtney's agency was a little bit more focused on e-commerce and my agency was a little bit more focused on coaches and course creators and service providers. And that was another great thing in merging that like now, you know, we're bringing on clients in either of those spaces you're getting at least one of your owners has like true um, expertise in, in those niches. Uh, and I kind of want to get a sense um, so, or give people a sense to understand exactly what you do. Um, and you had a client, um, Tina, can you talk about yes. that? Yes. So look, obviously big picture, we run Facebook ads, but something that we believe in the whole team operates under this principle an ad by itself actually doesn't do anything. An ad is just giving Mark Zuckerberg your money to get eyeballs on a piece of content. Like that's actually like fundamentally and functionally all it is designed to do. And so in order to be able to use Facebook and Instagram ads, almost like an ATM machine, right? Where you know you're going to put in X and get Y back every single time. Only looking at the ads is wrong, short-sighted, and like not we're going to be able to actually move the needle the most. And so the reason why I love this uh, case study of our client, Tina, is it's a perfect example of the way in which we work with our clients, not just on optimizing their ads, but the entire funnel and how this methodical approach that isn't necessarily sexy, isn't necessarily some like magical secret sauce that we have. It's just this methodical pro approach that creates results. And so Tina has a $997 online course on how to become a full-time influencer. And she sells that course through an evergreen webinar funnel. Previously, before coming to work with the ad girls, she had only sold that course through like a live launch and a live webinar. And so many of our clients come to us because they're tired of the live launch model or they just want to diversify. And so she really wanted to build out something evergreen, but just because something works live doesn't immediately mean it translates to evergreen. And so 
And we started out working with her. Obviously, our first focus was let's get the ads right. That is definitely the first piece that we always want to look at. Let's make sure we're targeting the right audiences. We have the right copy and we have the right creatives. There was a lot of rapid fire split testing happening there to get our cost per lead to a number that we would like um, and really just find the right audiences and the right messaging that would resonate. And so what was initially happening in the first month is that we were stuck at about a 1.5 times return. So for example, every time we spent a dollar on ads, People would opt in, go through the funnel, watch the webinar, some would purchase the course, but the ratio of return was spending a dollar and making a dollar fifty back. We're not losing money, not a bad place to start, but obviously not that exciting. And so in looking I get at excited how- about that. You know, I think anything <laughs> it's that? like because you're you're basically getting leads for free uh, and getting paid. I mean, I don't know if she's yeah. got a back end, but that 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 is exciting to me. But he could keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously you want to make more, but that's fine. Yes. Yes. And so, you know, look, our goal and and with every client, just like take a step back from that. Every client is different. Right. And so part of our job is understanding what is the bare minimum sort of like break even number when we factor in, let's say if they have a physical product, their cost of goods sold, we factor in their team expenses, their profit margins. We want to make sure our clients are actually profitable and not just look at numbers in the ads manager and say, we did it. We're profitable. But like, really, when you factor in the other stuff, so it's different for every client where that sort of baseline number is, where they're like truly, truly profitable. And then from there, we would obviously talk about scaling them to get to the right revenue level. But, um, you know, we knew Tina wanted more and we knew that more was possible with Tina. And something that um, we, you know, were seeing internally, we were able to clearly see two things. So one is we were able to follow the entire customer journey. And this is something we do for all of our clients. Again, not just looking at the ads, but the landing page, people actually showing up, registering for the webinar, showing up to the webinar, making it to the sales page, making it to the checkout page. Are they opening the emails that are being sent to consistently bring them back? What's the click rate on those emails? And so we were able to identify obvious drop-off points, right? The ads are working. We are getting people in. That's actually not the problem. More ad testing is not the answer here. It was figuring out where are the gaps in terms of that entire journey and working collaboratively and in partnership with Tina to basically just split test different subject lines, different headlines, making some tweaks to the sales page. And again, doing this very methodically. Um, And look, the end result, it took took almost three months, but we are now at a consistent six times return. Now that's a little bit better. Right. That's like that's like fun and exciting. Right. Like that's like we can put in 10 grand and make 60 grand back almost guaranteed um, because we figure out the recipe. And again, nothing magical or sexy here. Just this methodical process of working on every single touch point from person sees the ad to person is ready to buy, optimizing and improving each thing by just a little bit and makes the whole thing work and makes the whole thing that much more profitable. So Jennifer, we start with the, you know, like you mentioned the Facebook ad, there's copy, there's, you know, audience, there's creative, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that. And then once they get the click, it's to register for a webinar, they do the webinar. And like you said, there's a lot of moving pieces because like you said, with someone even registers for an appointment with you, you need to nurture them. So there has to be an email sequence set up to get, you know, you can't just assume, oh, they're going to show up. They registered. That's not the case. What's the email sequence that has to lead them back and how do you nurture them? And so they, they find it's important, et cetera. Do they, um, for the webinar, is the offer directly to a course or do they offer something else? Because then she offers, you know, the 997. I know some people will, you know, maybe have a call. Is that a low enough price point where you just send them directly to buy it? So obviously, I mean, I wouldn't say this is entirely rule of thumb, but mostly what we've seen is if it's $2,000 or less, if you have the right webinar on the right funnel, you can do click to buy. Tina does do just straight to a sales page to buy. We have many, many clients also who are more in the higher ticket space, which again, we consider to be at least two grand or higher. And those are do, those are usually doing, not that it has to be a webinar on the front end, but some sort of value add. And then, you know, go ahead and book a call and then they'll close a high ticket sale over the phone. Yeah. And then the reason I was saying like the 1.5 does excite me. If someone does have another product or a higher level service, you're basically getting Uh, leads for free. And so 
do you find that some of the clients will start off, listen, we have this $1,000 course and they build out also kind of a, a, a more of a back end to their, to their company or product. Absolutely. And so, you know, look to me, I, I don't, this is always a, like a lifestyle choice. Like Tina and some of our clients are just like, I actually don't want to have 75 offers. I just want to have this one thing. And so then it's our job to work with them on that. But we have other clients who do have like really good, um, like ladders almost of like different levels. And so with those clients, um, we're doing, we're really making our media buying decisions and our spend decisions actually based off of lifetime value and not just based off of the initial sale. Um, you know, I remember I was at, um, I spoke at traffic and conversions last September and, um, one of the keynote speakers who worked with a lot of eight and nine figure businesses was talking about how these companies that scale to, I mean, truly nine figures, if they're getting a 0.5 X return on their initial purchase, they're like put in $5 million, like, like scale to the moon, because they know over three months, six months, a year, that's going to turn to a 10 X return, but it just takes time. And so we have to educate our clients quite frequently on not being penny wise and pound foolish, because that actually will slow your growth. And let's make decisions based on the real revenue that's actually going to come in. Even if it isn't right away, we want to honor the fact that people are not all going to be ready to make the high end purchase right away. But if Facebook ads is being successful at bringing them into your world, you will ultimately slow your growth if you slow your spend just because that money hasn't hit your account that instant. Yeah. And there was another uh, person you work with, Donna. Mm -hmm. So I'd love for you to talk Donna, about what happened with Donna. We love Donna. Donna is just the sweetest, lovely lady. If you listen to this, Donna, we love you. Um, so Donna actually is a, a client um, that did a webinar to book a call funnel. Donna is a divorce coach, actually doing really, really amazing work in the world um, with women who are experiencing. I'm sure COVID has divorce. increased her business. Yeah, yeah. She, she's she's doing well and she does really, really great work. And, and she is somebody that truly, truly cares about it. And so that just makes, you know, our job that much easier, but um, she's a little bit different. So she came to us with already a working funnel and Facebook ads that she was running on her own. Um, however, she was really struggling to scale. And so she was really stuck at around like the $30,000 a month mark. Again, things were working. She was, you know, running ads and she was profitable, but she was doing them herself, which is exhausting and time consuming. It's really a full time job. And again, just really struggling to break through to the next level. And so um, what we really love about working with Donna is because everything was so dialed in and it really just took, you know, the right strategic partner, uh, you know, in us of being able to come in, find some of those little gaps here, we can improve things and know how to work with the algorithm to scale her smartly, we were able to, in just a couple of months, have her have her first $80,000 month. And what I love about that is obviously, if you consistently have 80 plus thousand dollar months, that's a seven figure business. And so the ability to take women from six to seven figures, like the impact that that has on the planet and the, oh my God, like those are just my absolute um, favorite stories. And I mean, who better than with somebody who's actually also doing powerful work with women. So walk through a little bit. You said it's a little bit different as far as the funnel because she's doing a webinar to a call. What were you yes. saying about that? Yeah. So again, you know, similar where we have an ad sending people to a landing page to register for the webinar, they watch the webinar, but because her program is um, several thousand dollars, I think she tends to sell it between like 6,000 to 8,000, depending on, um, you know, certain like fast action bonuses or whatever. Um, she's not able to just sell that directly on a sales page. So after the webinar, the pitch is, you know, you can get a free, I don't forget if she calls it a breakthrough call or a clarity call, you know, one of those um, sort of free calls. And then on the call, she, she works with people. She does like a little bit of coaching um, and then closes the sale there. And so something that, um, we use with this particular client is we actually use a third party tracking tool that allows us, even though the sale doesn't occur like on a website where we can track because they're taking that card information over the phone, we're actually able to track these actual sales back to specific ads and audiences so that we can make sure that we are putting our money in the right place and scaling the right things. Facebook attribution has always been complex and it's only gotten more complex in the last year or so. And so it's, it's, it's hardly perfect, but making sure, especially with these types of book a call funnels, 
that we're putting our money towards what's actually generating revenue is really important for our client success. Yeah. I can see, um, Jennifer, that you probably have to step in at different points because ultimately you're looking at the end result and not, okay, we got you the click through because you want Correct. them generating revenue. And I could even see fall off on the sales call. So Absolutely. you sometimes have to give advice on that yes. because let, let's say, I mean, you do an amazing job with the ad. The yeah. webinar is amazing. It gets them to the call. And now you're talking about now the call could be dropping off. What kind of advice do you give people around the sales call piece? Yeah. So um, this, this is your favorite is, part too. You like this. It stuff. is Exactly. I was going to say, so like it's, while I wouldn't say that that's always like part of our service that we offer sales coaching, that's like a, just a personal pet project of mine that I so enjoy. And so if we are having any clients that are having issues closing, the first thing I always say is please record a sales call and send it to me. Um, I can really pick up on very quickly what's working um, and what's not and be able to provide them with feedback. There is a specific way that I run my sales calls that I know works because it is so uh, aligned with my personality. And I don't want to just tell anybody here, go follow the script. I actually believe that being more you and having the right nurturing and warming up before the sales call is actually the correct recipe. Um, but yes, I mean, at the end of the day, going back to your point, we call ourselves our client's partner in profit. And the only way that we can say that and be in integrity is if we are working with you on every single part of the journey. And so everything up to the money has hit your account is something that we're our client's strategic partner on to make the whole thing work. Otherwise, we're spending money for the sake of spending money. We're doing lead gen for lead gen. I hate when you see people bragging about their low cost per lead. Are they buyers? Are they buying anything? Like, is it actually really moving your business forward? Or are you just growing, you know, your email list and looking at vanity metrics that actually don't matter? Yeah. What are mistakes? And you've done a lot of sales calls. You've you listened to a lot of sales calls. What are some mistakes that you, when you kind of, uh, hone in on and key on, on that people make when they're doing a sales call? I think the biggest mistake is the energy of the sales call. Um, you know, I, when people go into a sales call with an attachment energy, it doesn't matter if like the words that you're saying, right? Like I always practice um, spaciousness and unattachment in terms of, and look, I mean, I think even the starts with the way that we ask questions in our booking form, it's very much an energy of take it or leave it. Like I know the value of what we provide and actually like, I don't need to convince you or help you overcome your objections. Like none of that stuff is really necessary. Let's connect and see if this is a fit. And if it's not like love you and goodbye. And if it is, then like, let's in like a totally no pressure way, just like begin the conversation of moving this forward. And so it's the energy more than anything. And I think that the energy ties into um, what can be another mistake that is, is a result of the energy piece, which is actually being weird around actually asking for the sale. And again, if you had a complete unattachment energy and a take it or leave it, there actually wouldn't be anything weird um, around that. But people do tend to get stuck there. And sometimes like speak really fast and skip over it or like skirt around it and not actually remind, remember that this is a sales call and it's okay that this is a sales call. This does not have to be a free consult, a place where you give a ton of information away. It's a sales call and that's actually okay. Yeah. I love it. And so I have one last thing. And, and what I did was I thought it'd be fun to pull up Facebook and pull up an ad and I think we look very briefly just to make sure, um, you know, this is something that'd be interesting to talk about, but I have not, you know, Jennifer has not studied this. I just figured we'd bring it up and have her break down an actual ad on Facebook. Um, but before we get into that, so again, I'm going to share my screen, just going to have her impromptu give her advice over a, a live ad. Um, and I want to point people to the adgirls.com to learn more, uh, what they're doing. Uh, Jennifer, are there any other places online we should point people towards? 
besides that? I always love to connect with people on Facebook and Instagram. I'm just Jennifer mm-hmm. Spivak, or Jen, actually I think I'm Jen Spivak with two ends. if you want to go find me uh, on either of those platforms. But good news, if you visit our website, you will see our retargeting ads for the rest of your life. And so <laughs> that is actually the quickest way to stay in our world. Awesome. So now I'm going to just see you everywhere now that I'm on your page. Uh, yeah, uh, you yeah. might go see her actually right now. In, in your feed. That would be actually hilarious if that work that happens. Um, so I'm going to go to Facebook right now. And um, I pulled up this, uh, you know, this part of my feed. And I'll just kind of let you go through. But what we're seeing here is click cease. Uh, again, I don't know click cease. Uh, who they are. Maybe I clicked on something somewhere that that's why I'm seeing it. Um, and then, you know, I'll have um, Jennifer kind of walk us through what we're seeing here and, and give some advice over it. Um, so that's what we're seeing here on the page. So go ahead. Uh. So overall, I actually think this is a pretty good ad. And so when we're looking at the sort of like makeup of an ad and assessing if it's a good ad or not, Obviously, we're looking at really three key things. You've got your text at the top, especially the first line or two. This ad is using short form copy, but a lot of times it'll be you know longer form. And that first line or two is super important. That's the first thing that people see. Then you've got obviously your ad creative, which in this case is a video. And then your ad headline right below the video, which is protect your Google ads budget. So let's start with the headline. The reason I like this headline is I understand the context of what that is right away where people make mistakes with their headlines is they try too hard to be creative. And actually what can end up happening is it's so creative that I actually don't understand what it is in half a second. And that is the amount of time that we have to grab somebody's attention. So I actually really do like that headline. Um, I also really like the creative in general, anything with any sort of moving element whether it is video or just a GIF, right? Something that has any sort of moving element just helps draw your eye to it that much more. And so I would say that this is probably an ad that does a good job of stopping the scroll, Um, especially like with this first thing, like it looks like it's like pressing on something, like it's very uh, pattern interrupty and it's making a bold claim, bots are wasting your money. And so again, I think for the people who are advertising on Google, they're going to go, they are? What? And so it's going to really draw your attention. And again, all of the moving elements, just keep your eye on it that much. Um, I also like the use of, I guess, what you would call like a testimonial or review in that copy at the top. Um, The only thing is when I read that the first time, our Google Ads budget is finally going to actual clicks from actual people. I will say it took me just an extra second longer than I think it should have to understand what they were talking about. And so I wonder, I think that this ad could be stronger if it was like our Google ads ROAS improved by X percent working with ClickSees. Like let's talk about the result of the result of the result because the point of like bots are wasting your budget, protect your Google ads budget, that's actually been really clearly made in the other parts of this. And so if we could have something that's just a little bit more straightforward and to the point in that top text, I think that would make this ad that much stronger. Yeah. And they have something here. I don't know if this is important or not. They have excellent 4.9 on G2. I mean, they they include that for a reason. I mean, I guess I'm not sure. I, I don't think I'm the target person for them because I don't, run Google ads, but uh, I imagine that means something to, to someone. Right. And I mean, again, they're trying to um, like replicate what a review looks like with the stars and that they were rated 4.9. Excellent. But I actually, I don't know what G2 is. And so again, going back to, I think that top text could have, could be more clear in terms of the what and the context. And anytime there's even that one second of what's G2, what are the, that one second is where you lose people. Love it. Well, I want to be the first one to thank you, Jennifer. I want to check out the adgirls.com to learn more. And you know, thank you so much. Thank you, Jeremy. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, nice like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. 